In this example, I want to look at using the AWS CLI and specifically how do I configure the AWS CLI so that I can access my AWS services from the command line. So the first thing to note is is that uh, I'm doing a Google search here for the AWS CLI and you'll notice a link to install or update to the latest version. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click that and you'll see that there's different installation instructions for the different operating systems. So if I'm a Windows user, uh, I can download a MSI installer file for Microsoft Windows and do the, M, uh, do the AWS CLI install from there. If I'm a Mac user, I get a PKG file um, that I can download and do the install from there. And if I'm a Linux user, I can also do the install, but depending on which variant of Linux you have, the install is going to be different in terms of what package manager you might be using to do the, the Linux install. Okay, so I kind of skip over the Linux install because it'll, it'll vary widely depending on the, the Linux variant that you're using. Okay, so I have the AWS CLI installed on my machine already, and I can see that if I go out to my terminal window. Uh, I'm just going to blow up the font here a little bit. And if I type in the, the term AWS, that's actually the CLI command. And you'll notice that I'm going to get an error message here saying that I'm not using it correctly. It's complaining that there's an error. The following arguments are required, which command I want to issue. Um, but that also confirms to me that my terminal knows the command that I'm actually executing, the AWS command. So it recognizes that AWS command is just saying that I'm not using it appropriately. Okay, so um, to kind of give you an idea of what I want to do here is I want to use this AWS command from the from the terminal or command prompt or whatever environment you're, you're using. I want to be able to use it so that I can go out to AWS and access some of the AWS services. In this example, I want to go through and access DynamoDB. So if I open up DynamoDB um, and I want to look at the tables that I have. So right now I am in US East 1. If I switch over to US East 2, you'll see that I have a couple of tables. right? So I have three different DynamoDB tables in the Ohio region. If I switch over to the California region, so US West 1, uh, you'll see that I don't have any tables loaded in that region. So we can kind of work back and forth across those different regions to see the various DynamoDB tables that I have. So I like to work in US East 2. Um, that's the default region that I have. And I have three different DynamoDB tables here. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to go to my terminal window and issue a command AWS DynamoDB. So that's the service that I'm using. And then the command that I'm issuing is the command to list all of the tables. So I want to issue this command, AWS space DynamoDB space list tables. And that's always going to be the format, AWS, then the service name, then the command name. And then if I, if I had additional parameters, they would come next. So I would have parameters after the list tables. In this case, I don't have any additional parameters. So this is the entire command. I'm going to go ahead and try to execute it by hitting Enter. And you'll notice I get an error message saying the security token included with this request is invalid. Okay, so before I can use the AWS CLI, I have to configure it. Okay, and there's actually an AWS configure command. I'm going to show you that now. And this AWS configure command, when I run it, it asks four questions. So it asks me for an AWS access key ID. And you'll notice that I have an access key ID in here. If this is your first time running the configuration, it's likely to say none. Um, and that's the default. It'll be inside your square brackets. So if I wanted to keep this existing access key, I would just hit enter and it'll keep the access key that's in the square brackets. If I type something else, so if I type in A, B, C, X, Y, Z, then I'm going to overwrite that default access key that's included inside of the square brackets. In this case, it doesn't really matter to me because I know the access key is not working. So I can overwrite it. Um, the second question it asks for is a secret access key. 
And I, in, in this video, I'm going to show you where to get the access key and the secret access key. Um, but I'm going to leave the default that's there because I've already answered the question before. And I now have an invalid access key and secret access key. And that's, that's why it's complaining about the security token. Um, the default region name. So like I said, I like to work in Ohio. Um, Ohio is going to be U.S. East 2. Northern Virginia would be U.S. East 1. Um, U.S. West 1 would be that Northern California. U.S. West 2 would be um, Oregon. So um, I'm going to leave the default region name as U.S. East 2. And then the output format, I have it configured as JSON. So I'm going to leave that also configured as JSON. Okay, so I can run that AWS configure command as many times as I want. You'll notice that it now picked up the fact that I had changed the access key. So it, it's starring out some characters, but then it's leaving the C, X, Y, Z based on what I had just previously typed. So I can continue to leave it as such. I can leave the secret access key, the region, and the output format. I'm going to go ahead and clear this screen. So I can run that AWS configure command as many times as I need to. Um, but the real issue that I have is with the access key and the secret access key. Okay, so I want to configure that so that my account from my terminal window can then access the AWS services that I, I want it to access. Okay, and the way I'm going to do that is through AWS IAM. I'm going to create a new user account that's specific to the command line interface, to the CLI. So I'm going to go ahead and create a user account. The user account is going to be bwitkowski-cli. And for this user account, I'm not going to provide access to the AWS Management Council, which is this web-based interface right here that we're working on inside the browser window. I don't want this user to be able to log into the browser window. This user is specific to the AWS CLI. Okay, it doesn't have to be that way. I could provide both web-based access and CLI access, um, but in this case I'm setting up a separate user account that's specific to the CLI. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit next. I'm going to add this user account to the administrators group and the administrators group has that administrator ac access policy attached to it. So this account will be an administrative account. And the, what I will say about this is this account is then going to have administrative access within AWS, okay, from the command line or from the terminal, depending on how I'm accessing the AWS CLI. Okay, so that's fine. I go ahead and hit next and I create that user account. Okay, so now I have this user account. I can't log in to this web-based council, but if I click on this user account, there's a security credentials tab. I'm going to go into that security credentials tab and scroll down a little bit, and you'll notice that there's this access key section, and right now there are zero access keys. I'm going to go ahead and create an access key for this account, and it asks me what my use case is. So a couple different options. Um, but my use case is to use this user account with the CLI. And I'm going to confirm that. Um, I'm not going to give a tag value. I'm just going to create the access key. And you'll notice it gives me an access key and a secret access key. Okay, so I can download these files. But if I hit done and I don't retrieve the secret access key, the secret access key is going to be lost. So I'm going to copy the access key. So I've copied it to my clipboard. I'm going to jump back over to my terminal and I'm going to run AWS configure again. So that's the access key that I want to use. I'm just pasting it from my clipboard. Then it's asking what my secret access key is. I'm going to show it, copy it to my clipboard, jump back over to the terminal and paste it. And then the region is still fine and the output format is still fine. Okay, so now I've ran that AWS configure command. Now that that access key is available, it's active, it was just created, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back over to the CLI and I want to issue that command AWS DynamoDB and then list tables. And what's going to happen is it's going to use that access key and secret access key to basically use the Bwitkowski CLI IAM user accounts credentials to list the tables. Okay, and you'll notice that I'm getting three tables there. 
Okay, and it matches the tables that we are seeing in the Ohio region. Okay, and it's coming back as JSON data, right? So I have this JSON object indicated by these curly braces. I, I have a key, which is table names, which then stores an array of all the tables that are in that US East 2 region. If I run that AWS configure command again, I leave the access key and the secret access key, but I change the region to US West 1. And I'm doing that because I know I don't have any tables in US West 1. Okay, so now I've reconfigured my AWS CLI, and now I want to list the tables from US West 1. You'll notice that there are no tables in US West 1. If I change it back, so US East 2, and then I run the list tables command again, then I get the tables from US East 2. Okay, so at this point, my AWS CLI is configured to use the IAM account Bwitkowski CLI, and this Bwitkowski CLI belongs to the group administrators, and because the Bwitkowski CLI user account belongs to administrators, um, it has administrative access to all the different services within AWS, and because of that, the access key that I created for this user account then also has administrative access to all the AWS services. Okay, so I can, I'm all configured, all set to go, um, and then the next logical question comes up, what if I'm done with the account? What if I no longer use the account? What if I set it up for an employee and that employee leaves, or I set it up for a partner and that partner leaves? Uh, what can I do? Um, with these access keys, I can always deactivate them. So if I deactivate this access key, so now the access key is inactive, and I jump back over to the terminal and I try to list the tables now, you'll notice that I immediately get an error saying the security token included in the request is invalid. I can then reactivate or I can delete the access key. So if I delete this access key, it's asking me to confirm that. So I will confirm the access key deletion. So now there are zero access keys associated with the B. Witkowski dash CLI user account. I'm going to end up with the same error message when I try to access the list tables command. Okay, and then I can always go back and recreate the access key. So I can come back through and I can say, yes, this is for a CLI. I want a new access key. So I have this new access key. And if I use this new access key and the new secret access key, um, what I need to do then is I have to rerun the AWS configure command. To provide those credentials. Okay, I'm, I'm actually not going to do it this time, um, but I can run this AWS configure command as many times as I need. I can have different security credentials for different user accounts. I, um, I can deactivate and reactivate. I can delete and recreate access keys. I can run AWS configure again and again. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show you how to get started with the AWS CLI and how to run that AWS configure command so that you can get started with the AWS CLI. Okay, um, the last thing that I want to show you is if I go into an existing user account, I can also go into that user account security credentials and generate an access key. If I would, were to do that, this account would have both um, council access, so this web-based council, and I could also set it up so that it has CLI access. And that may be something that you want to do. You don't have to create a separate account for CLI access, um, but it does kind of keep things clean. Okay. So to recap, we installed the AWS CLI. And then once we installed the AWS CLI, we are able to go out to either a command line or a terminal interface to configure the CLI. So the configuration basically asks four questions. What's the access key? What's the secret access key? What's the default region and the default output format? Okay, so once we run that AWS configure command and we 
pop in our credentials essentially, uh, then we're able to run commands from our terminal or command prompt against our AWS uh, environment, uh, against our AWS account and all of those services that are inside of AWS. Okay, so this is just a guide for uh, installing the CLI and configuring the CLI so that we can run basic commands against our AWS account.